guys have seen a lot of this finishing desk this year. Hey everybody, it's Jen from Jekyll Bates, TGIF. Thank goodness I fish. It's Friday. Friday, December 28th, 2018. The year is coming to a close. It's dwindling down fast before you know it. It's going to be 2019 and then preseason and then the spawn and then you guys are going to be going crazy again. But um, before we get into these pieces, this is all one order right here minus this little guy, but we're going to get into that. These, okay, so just real quick, and I'm going to try and keep these flipped over as much as I can, but these are from Andy Schultz, and um, I hope I didn't butcher your last name, um, but Andy sent me some swim baits to repaint for him, and he sent some really cool dog treats, which is awesome. My dogs loved you for it, and uh, they say thanks. But then you sent me these gloves, and these gloves are probably the best fitting gloves that I've used all year long. I usually just get the generic bag of neoprene. It's one size fits all, but I've got a small hand. Um, these are great. So Andy, thank you, thank you, thank you for these gloves. Um, means more than you know. Sometimes it's just the little things that make your job a whole lot better. So Andy, awesome. Thanks so much. But you guys have seen a lot of this desk this year, and I wanted to take a minute before we get into this to thank you guys. You guys have far surpassed my expectations on the channel, my goals. Um, you know, you hear it all the time. If you guys watch a lot of YouTube videos or you know a lot of YouTubers, pretty much everybody I know, myself included, gets into this just as a keepsake to have memories that they can, you know, go back and re-watch and, and look and, you know, see some stuff or maybe fishing videos for the family. And, you know, that pretty much it's how it started out for me, me and my buddies back in Maryland. I think one of my first fishing vids was us putting power poles on his Skeeter. Um, I've always been involved with fishing since I was little enough to understand what water meant. And it's, it's really just kept me calm. It's one of the few things in life that's kept me calm, uh, aside from art. And to be able to combine those two things and end up having a channel with subscribers that um, interact with you. And I can teach you guys some stuff. Rascal, really? I mean, seriously, this was the best take I've done so far. Oh, the dog. Hang on. He's not done yet. But, you know, we're going to keep going through because Rascal is going to be a part of the, the, the series <laughs> for many years to come. And as long as he has breath in his lungs, he's going to bark. So that's just what dogs do. But really, you guys have, have shown me that there is more to YouTube than just painting and fishing and, and all the other things that go along with the channel because the way y'all are interacting with, you know, and, and leaving your own tips and giving me pictures and showing me a lot of community support and the other YouTubers that do this, you know, guys like Marling Bates and Lure Me In Custom Crank Bates and that's Michaels and then, you know, Jonas Summers over at Lure Color Studios. There's a lot of people that are putting Russ Allen at Insane Custom Stencils. Um, and there's many others. There's a lot of other people out there that have YouTube airbrushing videos. But there's, there's a sense of community that you just can't ignore. You have to recognize it. And, and let's continue to nurture that in the coming year. So thanks very much for the support. It means a lot to us. Um, check us out on Facebook. Check Michael's page over at... Um, the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting, check out um, Lure Color Studios, check out Marling Bates, check out a lot of, there's just so much cool stuff going on. Um, Wicked Pete Dog over at uh, Reckless Rodents in California, churning that, churning that stuff out. You know, Gerald, all the guys that, um, that are out there that are doing this kind of stuff and, and, and this type of format. Cool. Let's, uh, let's blow the doors off of the industry in 2019. So let's get into this. This is an order minus this piece. This piece I kind of did um, for me, and I don't know if I want to call it a wolverine pattern or it's a kind of, um, it's, it's almost like a bluegill pattern, but I just wanted to do some random striping on this. And then we accented that with, um, with liquid acrylic ink. So when we come into this bait and you can see that there's some, some pearlescence and shimmer to it, um, but you can see that this has been outlined and I used some liquid acrylic ink to do that um, before I clear coated. And when you have baits that aren't uh, the, the markings on them, like if you have just a, 
If you have a bait like this, it's a little bit harder to do because there is a, a texture to it. Uh, but if you have a flat side bait like this, this is one of the reclaimed from Lake Pickwick. So this is the real deal bait. It's not a, a knockoff. Um, but it's just really cool to play around. So be creative. If, if I can inspire you guys to do anything in the coming year, it's be creative. Um, come out with your own patterns. Use what we teach you and make some cool stuff with it. I mean, just be your own person. Don't, don't imitate. Um, and there's some standard patterns like, you know, everybody does shad patterns. This is a wide-lipped square bill is what we're going to start calling these things because, boy, oh, boy, there's been all kinds of intellectual property issues with the uh, originator of this bait. But and we don't and we don't. That's another thing that I if I have a couple minutes while I've opened that can of worms, let's continue to talk about that. So the definition basically of intellectual property is taking something and and making an imitation. Stop, stop, stop. I I'm editing this down and realized I did a really poor job describing the definition of intellectual property. So I put it in, but what <laughs> what I'm describing is violating intellectual property. So there's a distinction there. Just so you know. All right, here we go. Or a replica or taking credit for something that isn't yours. So my, my best example of that, because this obviously is, this is uh, a replica. This is a very good replica of a wide build square lip bait. Um, and there are millions of these things out there. And, and there's a lot of ABS plastic makers that will do that. Or you'll get seconds like uh, Lore Parts Online carries actual man blanks. Uh, Strike King carries the nude series now. Uh, that's a whole other thing that we'll talk about a little bit. But um, it, it's okay. So if you make a, a bait and you throw the Georgia logo on it and you sell that, that's violating intellectual property. Um, and yes, there's the, the big machine out there turning and turning and turning, but they've built that themselves basically. Like Strike King came from very small humble beginnings and through the years they've grown into this mega 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 company but they did that you know they and the folks that helped support it and nurture it and grow it did that and it took a lot of hard work for them to get there same is true of the makers of the original one of these you know success doesn't happen overnight so i don't fault the companies at all for doing that and you guys hear me say all the time if i had my druthers i wish that i had a, a million tournament fisher uh, anglers that only ordered the real deal this is an order that actually is for a tournament angler that i'm getting ready to remake um and a lot of the guys will only fish with brand name products you know sometimes it's it's contractual obligations and sometimes it's sponsorships or whatever um but please be respectful of other people's property. Um, they're really starting to crack down on it. I don't want to see any of the small businesses out there, including myself, get in trouble for it. So make sure you know your laws and don't call this something that it isn't. And that's the, the basic principle when you talk to these cons uh, companies and you're like, well, what, what's going on? Why did you guys delete my post? Or why, did, you know, why can't I sell my stuff? Because we're calling it something that it's not. So just don't do that. Don't, don't use any, you know, do what I just did. This is a wide, square-lipped blank. And most of the folks that are buying these things know what they are, and there's various versions of it. The pressing from this is phenomenal, and it's really hard to tell the difference. And I think that's another reason why the, the founder of the company and the company that, you know, is, is talking about intellectual property rights with this particular type of bait um, is having an issue with it because somebody made a really, really good pressing of this. Um, and, and, hey, it, it is what it is. But... Things like that can get you in trouble, so make sure you know your laws, pay your taxes. If you guys are selling lures on a regular basis, then you understand what an excise tax is. And if you don't, you should look into it because the last thing you want 
is somebody knocking on your door saying, hey, we're going to seize all your property because you haven't paid federal excise taxes and you've been incorporated for X amount of years. So that's just a little soapbox there. So make sure that you guys understand what that means. Um, don't call a bait something that it's not. So I can't, I can't use the name with this and I won't. And I'm not going to use the name with this either uh, because it's, it's one and the same. So this is a topwater popper. That's a very generic name. It is, it's got gill through water flow technology. And this is a really cool bait too. So let's talk about that real quick. So this is an order from a buddy, Anthony, and um, he ordered another Song of Ice and Fire, which gets you into yet another intellectual property issue, but it doesn't really. There are no sigils. There's no house sigils of this. There's no other than color patterns. This is a unique color pattern that I've come up with. It looks like it's caked in snow. Um, and technically the, the White Walkers and the Night King don't have any really blue. It's the camera when you guys are watching that on TV, it's the camera that does that. But it is inspired by the, the books and the creation. I always pay homage to that. But I don't have anything on this bait that's going to violate intellectual property. It doesn't have HBO insignia on it. It doesn't have Game of Thrones insignia on it. It's just an inspiration, a creative inspiration, just like if somebody had drawn a picture of Jon Snow. Um, but if I were to put a dire wolf on this or how stark any kind of insignia or sigil or reference to the show if i called this you know something other than inspired then i could get into some real trouble but anyways this thing is cool as i'll get out i love doing these for customers um super happy with the way that this came out you can get right up on it and you can just see it, it looks it's it's a lot of layering um, there's tons of layering on these things and it does take a while to do so when people are like hey can I have that in two days no you can't because it takes a really long time to do it's a lot of fun this is um, this is the house Stark and it's on a, these are on Demiki's these are real deal baits the customer asked for some real deal lipless so these are on Demiki 80s the trimmer 80s really good bait and this is obviously the black and the white and the gray. And these are gonna get dressed and shipped out tomorrow. The Night King version. All hand painted eyes, all layered, not imaged. Gorgeous, I love these things. These things are so much fun to do. This next one is that gold and maroon. This is the House Lannister. Also on that Demiki Trimmer 80. Resealed. Nice and bright and shiny and new. Okay, we've got some cool pieces in this. He requested some really awesome stuff. Let me do this. This is, uh, I've just pulled the gunk off of these. Still have to do the nose eyelid on this. This is a requested pattern, special order for him. Um, asked for sort of a cicada type style, only he wanted black with a little copper and red veining. So this is the imagined creation for him. It's got jets and eyes on it. Reverse lizards, black with the holographic pupil. And that was a special request for John. So John, thank you. You've done and far exceeded everything I've ever asked you to do this year. I don't expect for you guys to be fast because it's just you and you have a lot of work to do and you get slammed with a lot of orders. So I totally get that. I don't think that John over at Jetson's taking any more orders for 2018. So um, this is that. Cool pattern, love the way it came out. He also requested a mutant cicada, which we were happy to do for him. I was happy, it's not we, it's me and the dogs. Sometimes Casey fills the order. She's the yellow lab. 
there's that mutant cicada. Cool eyes, also hand painted. Two dots on the face. A little bit of blush orange underneath. Sorry about that. Got a few more. We do have House Targaryen. The red and black. Also Jetson Eyes. And let me pick this back up because this is Jetson Eyes as well. And that, you can't ask for closer Night King or White Walker eyes than that right there. That's the, I think, Blue Azer pattern that he does. God, those eyes, John. Pretty mind-blowing. Pretty cool. Good work. And this is the, those dragon eyes for House Targaryen. We could just go ahead and say this might be Drogon. So much fun doing these. It's just out of the box thinking. Be creative. Start playing around with um, stencils. See where it takes you. He asked for a couple of uh, herring, or not blue back herring, but um, the thread fin shad. So this has got just a little bit of sepia on it. Asked for two of those. And these eyes are the living eyes, fish skulls living eyes, and the color is earth. Really good color. It's got that brownish yellow. Very lifelike. Just all around good job. This is on that. This is the Schultz pressing of the 120 SP. This is the Rayburn Red Fade. Little gold up top. Fade. <clears throat> fading back. I'm going to need some coffee here. Hang on just a second. Okay. Whew, I had a, I was getting strangled in my throat. Needed a little sip of coffee there. These are black eyes. And this is on a holographic pressing. Suspending version of this. This also came out of Schultz. Tank tested. Very good really like this version of it. He's got a couple of different versions of this now. Um, he does have the sinking, which is everybody carries the sinking. And if you don't know what you're getting and you throw this, you know, you throw that version of it in the water, you're like, ah, it's not floating. So make sure you know what you're getting because there's a few of these versions floating out around the internet. And uh, Schultz has a pretty good product as well. So there is that and I think that's pretty much it for today so just a quick look over now my last question to you guys is leave me a comment below do you want to see a speed painting version of this this was a Christmas present that I got a couple of videos back from my buddy CJ. Um, he's the guy that I fish with all the time. Become a wonderful friend. Love him and his family dearly. Um, and he gave me this great big bass. So I've got the um, got the primer on it. But if you guys want to see a speed painting video of me doing this, and I have no idea what pattern it's going to be yet. Obviously, it's um, it looks like a bass. It was tailored and, and welded and created. Cut. It's metal. Um, and it's going to go up here. It's going to replace that. It's going to replace this big picture up there on the wall because that's been it's been way too long that I've had that and not even happy with that anymore. That was decades ago, I think. So yeah, let me know if you guys want me to paint that on camera in a speed painting session. Let me know. Leave me a comment, and I will see you guys later.